These barrels of plastic might be the most hated piece of gear in backpacking. They're bulky, awkward, difficult to pack, but for the last two years, I've been trying to fix that. I'm talking about bear canisters, and what started off as a road trip idea turned into a full-blown engineering challenge. I've sketched dozens of concepts, printed several 3D prototypes, and even called zoos to help me test them. Trying to come up with something that can withstand a thousand pound grizzly ain't easy. I wanna share with you the progress, the failures, and everything I've learned so far. This is a story of my attempts to build the world's first compact bear canister. But first, let's understand how we got here. Let's look at these two popular bear canisters. They work and are effective at preventing bears from accessing food and scented items in the backcountry and have been for decades. But as you can see, these are big and bulky. This means you have to awkwardly strap them outside of your pack and hope it doesn't fall or throw off your balance. Or try to fit the canister inside your pack, which ends up taking up almost the entire main cavity and can push into your back. This pain in the butt makes many hikers wonder, do I really have to carry a bear canister? But bear canisters are extremely important. Every year, hundreds of bears are euthanized in the U.S. after too many run-ins with humans. A grizzly bear was euthanized in Northwest Montana because it had become too dependent on human food. So when bears start associating people with easy food, they come back again and again in cities and the backcountry, which is why many national parks near bears now require carrying a bear canister. So they might be annoying, but it could literally save a bear's life and possibly a human's. But this is as far as we've come, a uh, sort of two gallon peanut butter jar. So this begs the question, if everyone complains about how big and bulky these things are, but we know they're really important, why hasn't anyone made a compact one? Admittedly, this canister just came out this year, which is modular and pretty interesting, meaning it can be adapted for a large or small size, but it's not really more compact, just you know a different size, and it weighs about a pound more than the examples I have. There are also these bear-proof Kevlar, like bags which are good but these are not approved by use by a lot of national parks I'm not entirely 100% sure why but it appears to be related to the fact that a bear can run off with these bags and or potentially puncture through these threads a couple summers ago I was on a road trip from Austin Texas to Moab Utah and got to thinking about this bear canister problem and began brainstorming some potential designs. Typical road trip thoughts. Specifically designs that would collapse into a small disc or pack flat like a deck of cards. I was intrigued enough to have a call with an engineer and that began my journey to try and figure out how to make a better bear canister. The first thing we discussed was feasibility. In other words, is a collapsible bear canister even possible? We quickly realized in order for a bear canister to collapse down, it would need multiple parts, walls, maybe hinges, etc. This introduces us to challenge number one. Moving parts are generally inherently weaker than one solid part, and weakness is a concern. Why? Well, bears are really strong. Grizzlies can weigh well over a thousand pounds with jaws twice as powerful as a lion and 10 times as strong as a human, capable of crushing human bones, seriously. So to help you understand how powerful bears can be, look at some of these canister break-in photos. If you've seen how the bear tossed around Leo Dico like a ragdoll in The Revenant, imagine what a hungry one could try to do to a few pieces of plastic that hold some tasty food inside. We determined we could make a design that collapsed, but there would be trade-offs. The canister would have to be damn strong, meaning thick-walled, possibly with reinforced hinges. Which introduces us to challenge number two. It can't weigh more than about, I'd say two or three pounds. Otherwise the benefits of the collapsible design would be negated by it just being too heavy for packing out in the backcountry. In other words, no one wants to carry a five pound brick even if it's smaller than a plastic barrel. So this design push and pull of balancing design strength with weight became the dance. We started coming up with designs that felt like a good compromise between strength and weight, but there were more trade-offs. I learned bears have really sharp, pointy teeth and claws up to four inches that can pick and pry at any little seam. And bears are smart. Even some of the bear canisters on the market now have reportedly been figured out by bears, uh, notably in the Adirondacks. 
This is why they're called bear resistant, not bear proof canisters. Because if a bear is strong enough and motivated enough, who's to say one can't figure out how to get in? This brings us to the third challenge. It would have to be easy for humans to open, possibly even assemble, but hard for the bear to open. Bear canister manufacturers have incorporated these child lock style tabs that require human level dexterity or these locks that require a tool like a coin to turn. Bear canister manufacturers have also used another really creative way to help prevent bears from getting inside the canister, their shape. The cylinder makes them stronger and also hard to grab, balance, chew, pick, pry, and stomp on. Pretty smart. Speaking of, we can conceptualize the perfect bear canister all day long, but it will need to be tested. This is where the IGBC comes in, or Interagency Grizzly Bear Committee. Yeah, it's a real thing. The IGBC tests bear resistant products with a bunch of grizzlies in a kind of zoo like sanctuary in Montana. Things like coolers, trash cans, bear bins, and bear canisters. So once our bear canister is ready, the IGBC will have scented items placed inside of it, for example, maybe like raw meat, and then thrown into the ring as bait, so to speak, with all the bears. If it survives unbreached for an hour, it passes the test and is market ready. Many products have come here to die. So how much have you had to change the product to become bear safe? This is the third generation. Roughly $250,000 in producing costs are on the line. And if this happens, back to the drawing board. So as you can tell, in order to make a better bear canister, we have some challenges to overcome. Strong, lightweight, and accessible to humans, but not to bears. Oh, and it can't be too, too expensive to make. So the engineers I interviewed all admitted this was going to be quite an interesting project. We even talked about making our own bear test, things like computer simulations, pressure testers. I actually called local zoos to see if they'd be willing to let me try out some of our prototypes. I started researching and napkin sketching a lot of concepts, things like rectangular prisms, kind of like these collapsible storage bins where they're walls fold down, telescoping cylinders, kind of like these stools that twist and lock. I also found an old half spherical bear canister ball design kind of like this. Now, before I start showing you the actual designs we've been working on, know that everything I'm about to show you are 3D prints and the material used in the 3D prints are not the same as the production material nor the same color. The 3D prints are really to help get a basic sense of size and feel of the product and they're actually often quite brittle. The first design I felt comfortable enough to move on to 3D printing was this, what I call the triple wedding cake. It has three cylindrical tiers, each one able to screw into each other, also with a nice wide lid base. It could collapse down to about a third of the size of a normal fixed cylinder bear canister and really only has four parts, tier one, tier two, tier three, and a lid. Easy to make and easy to assemble. I thought we had found the holy grail. Uh, but then I realized it wouldn't expand on its own and the uh, top tier would completely fall through the middle tier. But perhaps the most fatal flaw of all was trying to get the threads to engage on assembly and disengage on disassembly. So for example, when assembling, you could awkwardly try to screw in the second layer, but screwing in this third was difficult. The same for unscrewing it. The engineer considered making a lip to prevent the pieces from falling through, and maybe we could widen the thread spacing to reduce friction when screwing, but these all introduced more trade-offs. Okay, so we didn't get it right the first time. This brings us to design number two, what I call the double wedding cake. Same design, but with two tiers instead of three. This would be much easier to engage the threads with only one set of threads. And we could add a rim in the lid to prevent the upper tier from falling through. Super simple and foolproof. This would now only be able to collapse down to about 50% of the size instead of a third, which was okay with me, but it had more issues. The pieces were still too big and still difficult to screw together. Finger grip indentations and this inner handle didn't seem to help. Ultimately, it just felt a bit too difficult to assemble. And another concern with these wedding cake designs was when these were disassembled, couldn't a bear get leverage in this seam and tear them apart in this gap right here? By now, over a year had gone by. I learned you have a design in your head and then have a lot of back and forth with an engineer on tweaks and iterations before they come up with a file for a prototype to 3D print 
and then you wait for weeks or months until all the prototype pieces arrive and hopefully they work nicely. This means a very slow feedback loop in the design process. So I wanted to rethink how we were approaching this design entirely. The wedding cake cylinders just really weren't working. So I questioned the conventional bear canister cylinder shape. Maybe a cube could work. No one had ever made a cube bear canister. In order to make it hard for the bear to pick up and stomp on, we could make it curved with bowed walls, but walls flat enough that could still allow for a really nice sleek sleeve when packed. I call this design the cube. It has four walls that slide into corners. Each corner has guiding rails for the walls to fit into. In these holes are where metal rods and spring locks will go in the final production product. And best of all, it packs down flat. Nice. But the wall kind of rattled around inside and perhaps the biggest concern of all was the assembly. They weren't the easiest to slide together or keep together. This would certainly require some instructions for a new user, right? I guess we assemble and disassemble our tents at camp, but this felt like a bit too much. So by this point, my engineer had been pulled onto another full-time gig that practically required him to sleep at the factory, and I felt like we needed some fresh eyes, so I started working with another engineer. I caught her up on the challenges I had encountered and what I had started to call the design graveyard. We started working on a hinged cylinder design, something that was kind of a hybrid of earlier designs that utilized the rounded shape of a cylinder but had the packable walls of the cube. This is what I call the disc. To assemble it, you unfold these curved walls which are kept together by these hinges. You slide them into the top and bottom and voila you have a cylindrical bear canister. And best of all, it packs down nice and sleek into a disc like this. But again, I noticed some issues. These hinged walls felt flimsy. Yes, it's a 3D print, but I'm not sure even with a different material how strong these would be against a bear. And perhaps more concerningly is the lid access. These are supposed to drop and lock and screw into place. With these shifty walls though, it's not great. I wanted to share the bear canister design process I've been going through with you, but more importantly, I'd love to hear what you think about all this. Does a collapsible bear canister even sound beneficial to you? And if so, would love your feedback on any designs or features. Now, admittedly, to keep this video succinct, there are a lot of other more process-focused updates I decided to omit, and I didn't address some other questions to come in the future, like exact materials, manufacturing, tariffs, national park approvals, etc. But the big question still out there looming is, how to make a better bear canister. If you want to follow along on the bear canister journey or see more of our videos about hiking, long trail comparisons, gear, etc., give us a subscribe. This is Chris Cage from Greenbelly Meals signing off with for high calorie adventure meals. Check us out at greenbelly.com. Peace. I don't know what the hell I'm drawing. <laughs>